Okay, well, so now I'm going to talk about um, particle cell codes. So during my postdoc, I worked on such, such a type of algorithm, of method. Um, and now I will uh, go into details about how we optimize uh, such an architecture uh, toward the, the use of this on exascale machine. So my talk is divided into three parts. The first one will be about the particle cell method. I will describe how it works. Then in the second one, I will uh, focus on two kinds of optimization we have done. Uh, they are not the only ones, but I would like to, to talk about this one in particular. So first, uh, L2 gash blocking technique called tiling, and then the vectorization, what we, what we did to improve vectorization. And in the last part, I will talk about performance. So let's start by the description of the particle cell method. Particle cell methods are used in a wide range of uh, topics and wide for, for a wide range of applications. Uh, it has for goal to, to simulate plasmas and particles interaction. So you can find it in fusion energy, in astrophysics for the simulation of accelerators, conventional accelerators, but also plasma accelerators or laser accelerators. It's, uh, it's, it's used a lot in laser matter interaction, also in electronics and in plasma propulsion. So here you can find different images and you can, for instance, recognize an image from EGC uh, that we had before in another talk. Uh, you have image from WARP, from <coughs> Calder or from OSIRIS. So the difference between the particle cell method and other kind of uh, plasma modelization is the fact that here we will use a collection of particles uh, and macro particles, I should say, because we will not um, simulate the real particles, but group of real particles having the same properties from the same species and having, having the same kinetic properties. And in order to to calculate the interaction between all these particles, we used a field, a field that is modeled via a grid. So we, we do not compute directly the interaction like we, we could do in Monte Carlo codes, for instance. Here is the typical um, particle cell method. Usually, we divide it into four parts. Um, here, the first one I, I show here is what we call the deposition method, the deposition step. Uh, during this step, the particles that, carries, uh, that carry um, a current or a charge will deposit the information on the grid nodes, on the nearby grid nodes. Then uh, we want to compute the Maxwell equation to calculate the fields induced by the, the particles, by the movement of the particles in their position. And we will use the, the, the current of the charge depo deposited here on the grid uh, to compute the Maxwell equation. Then we have to do the opposite uh, operation. So we have to compute the new information from the grid, like the electric field, the magnetic field, at the particle's position, so that after we can move the, partic the particles forward uh, according to the field that, uh, that they, they see. In, in such an algorithm, there are two main hotspots for the vectorization, the deposition and the field gathering. Uh, these two um, operations are in fact very similar. They are interpolation step. And usually the interpolation method used here will be also the same as here, but in the opposite direction. So I would like to switch to some uh, optimization examples. Usually, in peak codes, we use a very simple uh, domain decomposition. Each, each domain will be handled by an MPI rank, uh, an MPI process. But usually, these domains are very large and cannot fit in cache, even in L3. So what we did first to improve our peak, our peak code is to decompose again this large domain into smaller uh, blocks that we call tile. 
the size of the tiles are carefully cho chosen to, to fit in the L2, particularly on KNL, because we want to optimize uh, our code on KNL. But it's not the only constraint. Each tile will have a grid, a field grid, I even several field grids, and will have particle properties stored in uh, 1D arrays, in different 1D arrays. Here we want the field, the fields to fit in L2, but not the, not the particle properties. The particle properties can, even can possibly fit in L3 on Aswell or Broadwell architecture, for instance. The, the, the fact that we have developed uh, a new decomposition has enabled us to, to go to a new parallelization. We had an OpenMP parallelization and we, we made our code hybrid. And the particularity is that if we have a lot of tiles, a lot of blocks, we can use just a simple dynamic scheduler with OpenMP and have a natural load balancing. Because the, the real problem here is that it's difficult to have a, a, an equal charge, an equal, uh, sorry, an equal load between all the tiles, since, for instance, there will be many particles here and more, uh, less particles there. Uh, so it's very difficult to, to have the same load balance everywhere. And uh, a good way to, to deal with it and, uh, is to have a lot of tiles and to let the scheduler deal with all these tiles. So after this, this first optimization, uh, focusing on the cache memory, I would like now to talk about vectorization. We did a lot of different uh, vectorization improvements, but I think the, the most impressive one is about the deposition algorithm that I, I talked about at the beginning. So here is the 2D representation of this algorithm. Again, when a particle is located in a cell, it will have to deposit to, de to deposit its, its contribution to, to the nearby nodes. The number of nodes involved depend on the order. Here it's the order one. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a best, plane, be best plane interpolation, but at order three, for instance, we will have to use all the nodes of, of this portion of grid. Here is the simple algorithm, the, the most classical one. We have a loop over all the particles of the tile, and for each particle, we determine the nearby nodes first. Then we compute uh, the quantity we want to deposit, and then we do the decomposition with coefficients, depending on the distance between all the nodes. The two first steps can be well vectorized, <coughs> but not the last one, because if, for instance, two particles are localized in the same cell, they will have to deposit simultaneously uh, their contribution, and there will be memory races or vectorization issues, and the, re the results cannot be trusted. Um, there is also another issue, it's, it's the continuous uh, property of the, of the arrays, which is not en ensured in such a, such with, with such a method. So what we did is first taking the original data structure, so this is the original one in 3D, not in 2D, contrary to the previous slide. You have the particles and the nearby nodes. Here it, we, have, we are at order one, so we are using eight nodes nearby the, the particle. And we, we create a new data structure that, that is the similar one as before, but, but with a new dim dimension here, a fourth one, uh, composed of only eight elements, but in a contiguous way. The, these eight elements are contiguous in memory. The idea here is to have the eight nodes here around the particle uh, in, in, this new, in, in this new dimension. So when the particle will deposit its contributions, it will, it will do it in these eight uh, elements. And because it's contiguous, the vectorization can be performed in an efficient way. And we, we will not have a, uh, a gather and scatter operation contrary to the previous uh, classical algorithm. The problem is that su such, a, such a new data structure induces more memory and more temporary variables, we can handle it if we use smaller tiles. So it's not really an issue. We can even do a, a decomposition of the tiles into blocks, into smaller blocks, uh, which is, a, which is a, a, a solution that we didn't implement, uh, we didn't implement, but uh, that can be done. 
The problem is that we have to do a reduction to the original data structure uh, because here we have to, to put this, this data into the original nodes uh, for the next step, the Maxwell uh, solver. The reduction can be vectorized, but it's not efficient. The good point is that it's a negligible time in, compar in, in comparison with the previous uh, steps, and it's done only once, after all the species and all the particles. So here is the new algorithm. We still have our loop over all particles, but here we decompose the loop into blocks. We'll work on block of particles. One block can be uh, a multiple of the vector length. Uh, these, these parameters can be tuned to get the best performances, depending on the architecture. Uh, we determine the nearby nodes and we compute the quantity that we want to, to deposit. So these, these uh, steps uh, can be vectorized very well on the first SCMD loop. Uh, then we have a second loop for all particles in a block. We do the decomposition in a, in a vectorized loop. So we do, the we do the contribution, the deposition, in a vectorized way. Here the, the, the vectorization is applied on the deposition itself. And then at the end we have the, de the reduction, which is, which is done only once. So what's about performance? Uh, I will first talk about general performance. The, the simulation that has been done. Yeah. yeah something so how did you solve the race problem? Is this, is this new structure solving also the race problem? Or yes, it's the main goal actually. Because here, if you have two particles, uh, you can see that here uh, you, you the, the vectorization will be applied on the deposition itself, so it will be done particles after particles. We did the, the simulations with Cori, uh, the, 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 the KNL system uh, at NERSC at Berkeley. It is composed of two partitions, a Haswell partition and a KNL partition. Um, at that time, we were able to play with, uh, with the configuration, so we did the simulation with an SNC4 configuration in, quadrant, uh, in, in flat mode. Sorry. Uh, actually, we, in our case, we can get the very similar performances with the quadrant and the SNC4 mode. So it's not really, uh, I would say, uh, the, the best case. It's just that we use this, but we can get similar performance with the quadrant one. Uh, here, I, first, I would like to, to, to focus on the results on each architecture uh, differently. So it, the, the, the two first bars here correspond to the original code without optimization, so only with MPI. And it corresponds for the blue color, it corresponds to the order one interpolation order, and the, the orange one corresponds to the order three interpolation order. Uh, without op optimization, we can see that we are uh, much slower on KNL than on Aswell. Then, uh, um, if we applied all the optimization we have done, so there are some others that the ones I've, I presented before. Uh, if we focus on as well node, we now have uh, an average speed up of two, uh, of two with order one and a little bit less than two uh, with order three. And on KNL, we managed to reach a speed up of five, uh, particularly with the order three uh, interpolation uh, factor which was a very good result for us. And then the, the, the best uh, things, the, the main goal we wanted to achieve is, is to have better performance on KNL. And we managed to get this, uh, particularly thanks to the new vectorization improvements, uh, with almost a factor 1.8 uh, in comparison with as well. Then uh, I had it in my presentation uh, a weak scaling a figure, uh, we did the weak scaling with different configuration. Here you have uh, the blue color for the KNL quadrant, flat qu quadrant cache mode uh, with four MPI ranks and 16 OpenMP threads per MPI ranks. We did the same thing for 64 MPI ranks. And we also did the same thing for as well. 
So we can see that uh, the weak scaling is good in average until uh, 500 nodes, depend on the threshold you, you want to consider. And then it starts to, to decrease slowly. Um, and this, we know why. It's mainly due to the particle and the grid communications. We have to do two kinds of communications, uh, particles between MPI domains <coughs> and tiles, and um, what we call guard cells, or ghost cells, uh, between, uh, <coughs> between MPI domains uh, it, and corresponds to the grids. We did a lot of effort to improve the particle communications and now the main hotspot is the grid, uh, the, the guard cells communication. So we have to do something about it. I will talk about this after. Um, we can see that the best configuration here is, th is this one, four MPI ranks and 16 open MP threads. It's not exactly the case ev every time. Uh, it seems that eight or 16 MPI ranks can also give uh, good performances. Uh, the, the full MPI mode is not efficient at the beginning, but surprisingly here, it, it reached again the, the, blue, the blue curve. Uh, in fact, these that these points are from only one simulation, so the statistics should be improved. And on as well, we have a very similar scaling as for KNL, except the last point here that again should be maybe improved statistically with more simulation. So I wanted to, to focus at the end on the roofline model. So we, we did different kind of um, performance test, performance, uh, uh, we used different performance tools to, to focus on, to, to, to try to understand what was our limitations. And we, we did some, some effort on the roofline model. So for, for those who don't know what, what's the roofline model, it's, it's a 2D graph with in uh, abscissa the arithmetic intensity and in coordinates the performances the arithmetic intensity is, is sim in simply the number of flops we will compute per byte we will load, and the performance, the number of flops we will perform per second, per time unit. On the roofline model, we, we usually have uh, two kinds of roofline. The first one is due to the memory bandwidth limitation, and the second one to the uh, computing units or the computation limitation. And we have two roofline due to this, uh, to this formula. Th thanks to the roofline model, we can represent several kinds of uh, memory levels and several kinds of uh, computational uh, instruction sets and uh, instruction uh, uh, degree. Like we can have the scalar roofline, the fuel FMA plus SEMD roofline. We can have roofline for the cache and the MCD RAM of the DDR. Usually when uh, code markers are under the, the memory roofline, in piece that it's mainly memory band. Uh, on the opposite, when it's under uh, a, blue, uh, a blue line, it means that it's mainly compute band. In most cases, we are in between. We are, never in, uh, we are never mainly compute or memory band. It depends on the part of the code, um, like uh, the different loops. There, there, is two kind, there are two kinds of roofline models, uh, what we call the classical one and the cache-aware one. The cache-aware one can be easily obtained with advisor. Here, I would like to present you the classical one applied on the wall code. To, to get this result, we used Vtune. Vtune can, can give us the number of bytes we load, the total number of bytes we, we have loaded for the wall code, and SDE, the, soft, the software development uh, kit from uh, Intel can give, you, can give us the number of flops at the end of the simulation. So here it's really an average over the, all the functions, all the loops of the kernel. Here is the, the non-optimized code, code with no tiling, no vectorization. We can see that we were mainly uh, memory band. Then we had the tiling, which is the L2 cache blocking technique. Since it is a L2, cache blocking techniques, uh, indeed, we move to, to the right. Um, we decrease the number of bytes we load, and we perform the same number of, 
we perform more flops per, per byte we load from, from the MCD RAM. Here is the MCD RAM uh, memory roof line. And then at the end here, we have our fully optimized code. Uh, not exactly the fully optimized one. Uh, there are some other optimizations that came after, but uh, this plot uh, is the last one I did uh, with our optimization. And thanks to vectorization, we can see that we managed to move to the left again because we had some other little cache blocking techniques at other um, position of the code. And we managed to move uh, on the uh, to the top to by, by increasing the, the number of, of, fl of, of flops due to vectorization. However, we can see that we are very close to the scalar roof line. So there is still a lot of uh, work to do to to, to reach uh, to reach the, the peak, the, the, the maximum uh, performance we can get. It's, it's very difficult with peak odds because there are different kinds of hotspots and all these hotspots have different issues. Uh, we can also see that we are still memory bound, uh, surprisingly, because uh, we, we have done a lot of effort to improve the cache memory management. All the work we have done uh, in our code uh, has been computed, has been uh, added in a library called Pixar. So Pixar is a library dedicated to, to people that doesn't, to, don't, doesn't want to, to spend a lot of time to, to optimization and want to, to easily have uh, high performance subroutines for peak codes. Um, on, on this website, I added all the features with uh, details about the optimization. I added some performance tests uh, at the node level uh, on different kind of architectures. I added some tutorials to explain uh, how we can compute the roofline model, for instance, or how we can improve some typical optimization uh, uh, performance issues. Of course, we, ca we can get the code, and you have also some resources uh, about peak codes. In conclusion, um, here is a, su the, a brief summary of all the optimization we did. We had the multi-layer uh, parallelization with, uh, with OpenMP and MPI. We had different cache blocking optimization. The main one is the L2 cache blocking technique I presented before. We managed to vectorize the deposition and the pro projection. Uh, the particle pusher is already well vectorized and the Maxwell <coughs> solver still need improvements. We have an optimized particle communication algorithm that I didn't present. Um, we have some novel new solvers that enable to, to, to do the Maxwell solver in a different way. And we have load balancing and sorting techniques to, again, improve how the, the load is um, well distributed between the, the MPI domains. I would like to finish by some advices uh, about what we learned from, these, uh, fr from this work. Um, I completely uh, join um, Guillaume's uh, advices uh, that he presented before. Uh, the most efficient optimization, in fact, uh, are sometimes the most uh, easy one. First, ex externalize or reorganize the branches inside uh, intensive loops. For some part of the code, this these simple things represent almost uh, ten uh, speedups of tens. Um, avoid complex operations such as divisions or complex, uh, but it's, it's sometimes difficult, but uh, exponential or logarithm, for instance. Uh, reorganize your, your operation to, to have more FMA. If you already have the vectorization, try to get more FMA by reorganizing the, the computation use a smaller or try to, to, to linearize uh, very small loops. Um, about uh, our, uh, our code, uh, think about cache reuse. Divide when possible uh, the workload into small chunk of data that, that can fit in the different level of cache. Think about LKNL that doesn't have L3. This, uh, the, the fact that there is no L3 means that you cannot, you cannot be forgiven for your laziness uh, about the cache management. Rethink the data structure as we did for the, the deposition in order to get uh, continuous uh, data. 
and continuous and aligned data for a more efficient vectorization. And then there is this, uh, this question, should I target an architecture with very uh, uh, deep optimization or should have a more portable uh, optimization? Here we decided to have a portable one uh, by using OpenMP directive and auto vectorization. Some people are doing the opposite for PCode and can get better results, but they, they target specific architectures. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>